So hi everyone, uh, welcome back to F110 Autonomous uh, Racing. Um, today is another short video mostly to talk about the uh, next assignment which is uh, about wall following. Uh, as you may recall a few weeks ago before we transitioned the course to the online format, uh, we were discussing what wall following is, what were the principles of wall following and how you could actually accomplish going around the track uh, as if you were the only car uh, one at a time simply by looking at the data from your lidar uh, on both the vehicle uh, and using that to uh, sort of traverse the track as if you were following the uh, the profile of the left or the right wall or even looking at both the profiles to be right in the center of the track at any given time uh, so we have thus far um, release the online uh, f110 simulator for the course uh, if you haven't seen the previous video i definitely would encourage you to go through the video the accompanying slides and try it out for yourself that you do indeed have the access to your team's uh, virtual car um, on the server which is always running and like i said always if you had a problem in getting access to your car or uh, remotely SSHing into the GPU server on which the simulator is hosted, just post uh, um, the question or clarification on Piazza and we'll follow up uh, with you uh, very, very quickly. So going back to the, the this video, um, as it says, this is assignment two for the course. We are uh, a little bit behind than usual due to the uh, unusual circumstances, but I think we will still be able to cover all the exciting stuff in the remaining few weeks of the course. Uh, starting with wall following, which is really your first uh, sort of uh, ability or the first task in order to uh, get the car running in fully autonomous mode. So just to be clear, you know, this is what was originally planned. We wanted you to um, implement wall following uh, in this track uh, or sort of the similar to this track that you see in this looped video. Uh, and all what you are seeing is this car, the 110 scale autonomous race car, it's able to go pretty fast around the track. This video is obviously sped up um, and it's doing so simply by looking at the distances of the vehicle at any given time from the left and right uh, sort of wall. And that's why it's called, uh, you know, wall following. And so while we've already had a lecture on wall following, I will go over some key principles uh, just to, uh, you know, serve as a refresher if you have forgotten what we covered a few weeks ago. So I'm not going to go into all the details again. You should go back and look at that lecture uh, separately. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of what wall following is and then uh, going to go give you uh, another detailed overview of what you have to do for the assignment. All right, so this assignment is due uh, in 10 days from when it will release, which is uh, uh, at noon on March 31st. Uh, I'll make sure that an announcement goes out uh, on Colab uh, and the assignment is also uh, uploaded on the, the course web page. Um, it's due in 10 days from the date of release, which is more than our typical week uh, that we give for these sort of assignments. Uh, remember, you are still working in your, uh, in your teams in order to do this assignment. So um, I trust that each team will separately figure out how to online sync with each other um, and decide who works on what in terms of uh, their uh, attempt at this assignment. So, so it's due in 10 days. It's due at noon at April 9. Uh, another separate uh, announcement will go out uh, in terms of how we will evaluate this assignment and how you are supposed to demo the assignment to the instructor and the TA. Uh, remember, as, as long as your code is committed to Colab or in your uh, workspace on the server, uh, it's very easy for myself and the TAs to uh, run your code and see, you know, if you are able to fulfill all the requirements uh, of the assignment. Uh, so it doesn't say this on the slide, but it goes without saying there's a separate PDF document which will have all the details that are also contained in this uh, slideshow uh, so that you should go over that document which contains all the details about what you have to demo and in what order are we going to um, uh, evaluate the demo? So if you recall on the real F110 car, um, the idea was that we have this uh, command multiplexer. So hold on while I switch to my pointer. 
Yeah, so if you recall, the idea was that you could control the physical F110 card. This is where that image has been taken from. Um, it could accept commands from both the joystick, the Logitech joystick that we provide, or it could accept the commands from the onboard Jetson TX2. And then there was this node called Command Multiplexer, which was essentially a software switch between whether you are operating in teleop mode versus uh, operating in autonomous mode. And then the rest was this command multiplexer used to translate your inputs uh, into a format that is readable by the onboard speed controller. Now, the only thing different in terms of the simulator is there is no uh, speed controller. It's a software, it's simulation in gazebo, but everything else is pretty much the same, right? You will still have some sort of a command multiplexer that you will enable or disable using some parameters. Uh, and then in software, we will issue commands to move the base link of the car corresponding to what it receives either from the teleop or from autonomous mode. Obviously, in wall following, we are going to be talking about autonomous mode and not teleop. Uh, another reminder is that regardless of who is controlling the car, um, you need to respect these uh, input values and input saturation ranges for both the steering and the acceleration of the speed of the car. So recall that on the real F110 vehicle, the steering value should always be uh, this floating number between a negative 200 to a positive 100 corresponding to turning fully left or fully right, uh, as opposed to, and similarly, the speed value would be uh, negative 100 for full reverse throttle that you would rarely use and uh, plus 100 for full forward throttle, which I also discourage you to initially use. You should start slow and then increase your speed and see the behavior of your autonomous node. And so the way this would work in the assignment is you are writing some wall following nodes that I will walk you through uh, in, in this lecture. And the output of this node would be some sort of a command or a topic being published, which contains the correct steering value. And to begin with, you can even fix the speed, right? So you can only, let's say, fix the speed at 20 or 25 uh, as, a, as just an example between this negative 100 to 100 range. And so all you have to worry about is whether your steering is correctly being uh, changed in an autonomous way based on the distances away from the wall. Right, so, so, so on the real car, there was this topic called, you know, car one offboard command. And this is which uh, the topic that you use to publish the steering and the speed value. Uh, the good thing about the simulator, and I've said this many, many times again, uh, simulator mimics the real world very, very closely, which is why it is uh, possible for us to do all these labs uh, as good as how they would work in the real world. Uh, the topic that you will publish your command to in the simulator is exactly the same topic. The only difference is that uh, car one will correspond to the virtual car of team one. And so you would replace one with your own team number and everything else should work. So you should recall how this topic uh, uses messages of the type Ackerman drive from Ackerman messages. Um, uh, and if you have forgotten Ackerman drive message, this is the, uh, the message format or the structure of the message uh, as is present in the Ackerman messages package. Um, and only two values are used by the virtual F110 and of course the real F110 card as well. So we only care about the steering angle, which is a value between negative 100 and 100. Note that negative 100 and 100 don't correspond to degrees or radians. This is a mapping between some physical turning uh, uh, steering angle uh, in degrees and this range from negative 100 to 100. Uh, and similarly, the speed also has to lie between this range of negative 100 to 100. All the other um, fields of this message, such as acceleration, steering angle, velocity, and jerk, these do not matter. The code doesn't even parse these. So just to recap what wall following looks like, this figure um, is also described in the PDF of the, of the assignment available on the web page. Uh, but if you recall, we went over this in detail. The idea is that uh, at any given time, let's say your car is at point A, so your instantaneous distance to the wall is this AB, uh, but you are not trying to uh, compute the error between AB and the distance between, let's say, um, you know, the, the vertical line uh, or this green line in this case, which, uh, which is your desired trajectory. What you do is you project the car forward by a certain distance or based on the velocity, if you are doing uh, dynamic velocities as well. And what you are interested is, 
is in minimizing the future distance CD, which is the projection of your car into time. So by minimizing your future projection or the future distance away from the wall with respect to the reference trajectory, uh, you are able to follow the profile of the wall. And so from simple trigonometry, I'm grossly oversimplifying because we've covered this previously in a lecture, you can compute this angle alpha based on if you know some distances uh, A, B, which are not shown here, but those are the projected LIDAR rays onto the right-hand wall. Uh, and so you can compute CD, which is your desired, uh, which is your estimated predicted distance away from the right-hand wall. You can compute that solely based on what you know where your car is uh, uh, and what are the distances of these two specific rays A and B which are theta orientation apart. And so once you know this desired trajectory uh, or once you know CD, you can compute the error as the difference between the desired distance away from the wall and your projected distance away from the wall. And so this error could be positive or negative, meaning you are on the left-hand side uh, of your desired trajectory or on the right hand side of your desired trajectory um, and that will also matter because you will use this error to set up a proportional uh, and derivative controller um, to correct the steering angle of the car um, in a PD manner or a PID manner with respect to the error, right? So, so as is shown here, you can set up a steering controller where the correction in steering is some proportion of your error which is the trajectory minus uh, CD, plus some derivative uh, gain times the rate of change of error, where you can simplify the rate of change of error, simply the delta between the previous error and the current error. So once you have the error correction in steering, you update your current steering angle with this correction in the hope that if your PID is well-tuned, I'm calling it PID even there, though there is no integral term and you are free to play with integral terms in your PID in the assignment. But once you have the error uh, and your PID is well-tuned, then the steering angle should correct itself based on if you are too close or too far away from the desired trajectory that you are supposed to follow. Okay, so this was just a refresher. I didn't go into all the details since we've covered it in the previous lecture. You're always free to go and look, look up those slides. Um, but this is how the PID of the wall following works. Um, so let's get to how what you have to actually do for the assignment. So the first thing I want to point you towards is that uh, a new package has been uh, committed to the course Git, uh, GitHub. So if you remember, we've been using the F110 course labs repository for all the assignments and lab sessions. So uh, if you go to this URL right now, uh, you will see or find that there's a new package called race, uh, which contains the template code that you would require for attempting assignment two on wall following. So here are the contents of this new package. Uh, there is a, a message subdirectory, which contains the definitions of some custom messages that I'll explain in just a second. Uh, but the main part of this, uh, um, this package are two files. The first is called distancefinder.py uh, and another is called the control.py and both of these are, uh, are templates that you have to complete. Um, you are free to start from scratch and write your own files, but these templates are meant more of a guideline rather than uh, a restriction for you to write a certain style of code. Uh, and in addition to the two files that are incomplete, uh, a while ago, I had actually shown you how to write a simple subscriber uh, to the scan messages that the simulator has. Uh, and so I have committed that to the package as well, just for reference to help you out in uh, writing such a subscriber. All right, so, so as you can see in this race uh, package, you have these two files that you have to complete. Um, in the second half of today's video, I'm going to go in detail uh, what is to be completed in each of these uh, template files. But before that, uh, as you have noticed that in addition to these source scripts in the new race package, uh, we have provided some custom message fields for you to use in your implementation of the wall follower. The one which is of definite interest is the PID input dot message format. Uh, so what is this message format? This message simply has two uh, fields. One is called PID velocity and the other is the PID error. And both are 32-bit floating point values. 
um, and so what you, you will use this uh, uh, these fields to attempt the wall following lab and uh, if some of you want to attempt the extra credit as well then the PID velocity can also be used but uh, note that in the future uh, slides in just a few minutes from now I'm going to talk about how do you compute this error from the wall uh, and uh, publish it on some message and so when we do that the custom message type that we will use is the PID error which would be uh, sorry the custom message type would be PID input and PID error would be the subfield of that message type all right so let's go over in a nutshell what has to be done for this assignment so by the end of the previous uh, video you should have know you should know by now how to connect to your virtual car on the server which is running on the computer science server behind the uh, uh, UVA's uh, virtual private network uh, so if you were able to visualize and run teleop as per all the instructions from the previous video you're in good shape to continue uh, attempting this uh, uh, wall following uh, assignment so what you have to do is actually quite straightforward the first thing you have to do is you have to write a node called this distance finder or abbreviated at dist underscore finder uh, dot python and so as is depicted here this node um, the, the goal of this node is it subscribes to the scan messages from your virtual car right so your virtual car has a lidar and it's going to report distances to the track boundaries uh, and so this node is a subscriber to the messages on the uh, scan topic uh, notice that the scan topic is also uh, different for each car so you should subscribe to only your team's topic otherwise things won't work out for you and uh, the kind of messages which are sent over the scan topic we have seen many many times are of the type laser scan from the sensor messages package so this is the where distance finder gets fresh lidar scan data it will do some processing and what it will publish is the error uh, value of the error as computed by this desired trajectory minus uh, CD okay so you have to publish the value of the error uh, corresponding to every new scan that you obtain uh, and as you can already see that when you mess when you publish this on the uh, car underscore team name slash error topic the message type is the PID input message which I just explained previously so that's why we need a custom message type so that you can send that value a 32 bit floating value of the error so this is the first task you have to complete distance finder and distance finder will publish the error but who is implementing PID on that error that's a different node called control.python and what this node does is you can see it subscribes to the error topic which is getting published by the distance finder and based on the value of the error the node will publish the steering and the speed values between negative 100 and 100 to the car offboard command topic exactly how you would have done it on the real car it's the exact same topic because it's of the same type Ackerman messages Ackerman drive okay so so as I said as we go on into the description in detail of what has to be implemented this is just a high level telling you how information flows in the simulator distance finder parses lidar scan messages and computes the error which is then published on a topic dedicated to your car this error is subscribed by your control node ROS node and the ROS node implements PID on this error to compute the steering correction and send a value of the speed as well to begin with you don't need to uh, compute uh, dynamic velocities you can use a static velocity and only compute the steering correction uh, as explained in the wall following lecture so unknown to you uh, in the simulator there is a, exactly the same node that you find on the real car there is a virtual command and multiplexer which will read your offboard command messages because it is subscribed to that and this node will then further send the correct messages to move the car corresponding to the steering and the speed values that you are publishing from control.python all right so i hope the the flow of information or the order in, of events is clear from uh, this graphic and uh, um, next we will take a deeper dive to look into what is it that you have to write in the distance finder and the control.python file 
So let's start with distance finder. As is clear from our previous uh, uh, picture, we have to subscribe to the scan messages from the car. We need scan data in order to do anything autonomous. And our goal is to uh, massage the scan data in a way that we can publish and compute the errors um, between the desired trajectory and the distance, uh, the projected distance of the car um, from our current position. Right, so, so within distance finder, you have to com uh, complete two different functions which are provided in the template. The first function is what is called get range and another is just a simple callback function, right? So the, the callback function will be invoked every time you receive a scan message because that's what we are subscribed to. Uh, and within the callback function, you will compute the range or you know the, the CD distance uh, away from the wall. Okay, so distance finder subscribes to scan. Um, these messages are of type laser scan. Um, we have gone in detail previously over uh, how do you parse laser scan messages? Uh, if you have forgotten that part, that's the reason why uh, one of the files provided in the race package is a file called scan test, which is a simple subscriber to the laser scan style of messages. So every time a new laser scan message arrives, uh, the callback will be invoked. Um, get range is called from within the callback, and finally you compute the um, the mess. You compute the uh, the the uh, error value of your PID input message and you publish that on your car one error message. <coughs> Excuse me. So in, in the callback function, um, which is invoked every time your car gets a, a virtual LiDAR scan, um, this, is a, this is the sort of the pseudo code of what you have to write. And this is also based on our wall following uh, uh, understanding which uh, is also explained in the in the pdf accompanying the assignment so the high level uh, order of events is you have to pick two rays in this case i'm using an example that i'm going to uh, follow the profile of the right hand side wall so you pick two rays uh, on the right hand side um, and the way you pick rays in software is you have to specify the index of each of those rays and so uh, the index in the range vector so remember how uh, the LiDAR uh, scan uh, contains of, uh, 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 an array or a vector called ranges. And so what we, have, what we have to do is we have to select the indices of the two rays, which will give us these distances A and B along those two uh, particular uh, angles, right? So it's, t it's uh, typical to pick a ray at zero degree, which is uh, completely um, sort of perpendicular to the, to the car. Uh, and at theta degree offset from zero degree. And so once you pick these two rays by specifying their indices, uh, we will obtain the distances A and B corresponding the, to these two ranges by calling a function get range. So get range will be a function that takes input argument, the value of the angle that you want to pick and gives you the range uh, reported by the LIDAR at that angle. Very simple. Okay, so based on A and B, we can calculate alpha, A, B, and C, D. This is trigonometry, which is again detailed in the in the handout or the PDF. And once we have C, D, we can calculate the error as our desired trajectory minus our future error, our future distance from the wall. So, by the way, you are free to play with the desired trajectory which works for you. We are not uh, going to check for whether your car is exactly 30 centimeters from the wall or not. So you you can choose half a meter, that's a good value, the track is pretty wide. So if you are always within half a meter of the right hand wall, you should be able to do a complete loop in the absence of other cars. Anyways, you, conclude, you calculate your error, um, sorry for the typo here, you calculate your error as the difference between desired trajectory and the future distance and you use this error and construct the PID message, which is a custom message, by populating the PID error field with this value that you just calculated in step four. And PID velocity has, has just been provided to support some extra credit um, parts of the assignment. But for your first attempt, uh, this value doesn't actually matter. You can set it to zero or any other value between negative 100 to 100. So you construct this 
PID input message and you just publish this message. And what we are interested in is this value of the error, which once again was computed by obtaining distances A and B by calling get ranges. Okay, so get ranges is a function which you send the data reported from the LIDAR and you send a desired value of the angle and it will return uh, the distance reported by the LIDAR at that angle. Okay, so it should be a very straightforward function. The thing you need to be careful of is that your LIDAR data reported can sometimes contain not a number if, uh, if there is no obstacle reported in a particular direction. So you have to maybe put some additional checks to, uh, to, to make sure that whatever distances you are reporting are not, uh, not a number or infinite distances. So this is the purpose, that was the purpose of the distance finder node. It takes scan data, every, for every scan packet, you um, invoke the callback. Within the callback, you pick two rays. These two rays will allow you to uh, compute the AB and the CD, which is the future distance away from the wall, and hence compute the error, which you have to publish on a custom message. Now moving on to the other um, node that you have to write called control.py. Um, so this node subscribes to the error messages that the distance finder is publishing. So every time a new PID input message is received on the topic uh, car X error, this is incorrect. This should be the same as, you know, every error message is appended by the name of the car or the team which is publishing that. So a new message is received, then the callback function corresponding to the subscriber is invoked. In the callback function, you are computing the steering correction using PID or mostly proportional and derivative control. Then you update the steering angle with the correction. You do some checks to ensure that you are not sending a value which is outside of the negative 100 and 100 range. And finally you publish this updated steering value to the offboard command topic uh, of the type Ackerman drive. Okay, so this is what you have to do. And again, if you look at the, the template code provided for control.py, it will adhere to these five steps that are shown here. And so if you were able to finish distance finder and control.py, what a successful implementation will look like is that you will run both these nodes and we would we should see the car go around the track without crashing into any walls needless to say uh, and completing an entire loop autonomously so the thing to remember here is and this would be my suggestion as well um, the lab itself is not very complicated it's actually the thing which will take most time is tuning your pid controller uh, and picking the two correct race A and B based on experience. Um, so for the first iteration or attempt on the lab, like the baseline um, demonstration, you can set the speed to be a fixed speed. Don't set it to be too small so, so that it takes an hour to go around the track. Set it at, at a reasonable speed or like anything between, uh, you know, sort of 20 and 25, 30 is a good value. It's slow enough so that you can debug your algorithm but it's fast enough that the car will actually come back around in half a minute or something. So so, uh, need, so that choice of the speed is still up to you. Uh, what we are interested in noticing is the car goes around and uh, it essentially follows the wall. Um, you may want to echo the values of the distance from the wall, the value of your steering correction as a debugging message that will help you um, you know, understand the behavior of your algorithm better, uh, but essentially getting the A and B rays right, the angle theta correct, um, and the PID tuning is what will take a little bit of time. Um, other than that, it's just like writing these two nodes. Um, so that was the baseline demo. And like I said earlier, announcement will go out in terms of uh, how you will actually demo, uh, whether it could be just a screen recording or whether you know, you will run the nodes in a live uh, session and uh, uh, on the on the server with the TAs watching, um, one or the either, or maybe an option. Uh, but we will we will send that as an uh, announcement uh, this week. 
uh, but needless to say um, you, you should submit all your code by the by the due date which is on um, uh, which is 10 days after the assignment is released so other than that uh, you may also want to attempt some extra credits and there are three different ways for you to uh, get more credit than just the baseline demo um, so the first one is actually the lowest hanging fruit i think everybody should go for it uh, this is simply to create a launch file called autonomous.launch uh, within the race package such that uh, we don't have to launch the distance finder separately and then the uh, sort of the uh, the control.python or even the um, i'll shortly share a, a launch command with you uh, to invoke the autonomous mode of the simulator. You can package everything into a single launch file, uh, which launches the node in the correct order. It accepts the inputs for the gains, um, and that will give you some extra credit if you are able to demo the entire lab with the launch file. Um, the second, um, also somewhat relatively straightforward functionality is uh, the collision avoidance uh, uh, part of the lab. Uh, here you just have to modify your existing code or write a separate node um, such that if the LiDAR detects that there is a, a obstacle right in front of it, so remember in wall following, you're typically following the right wall or the left hand wall. You're not paying attention to what's directly in front of it. Part of the reason is that the track will be empty when you are uh, testing your car, but if you uh, if the LiDAR detects that there's an obstacle right in front of it, it should just immediately stop. That's what collision avoidance is. Uh, more than collision avoidance, this the correct name for this is uh, automatic emergency braking. Okay, so um, to give you an idea how you would attempt to do this, um, you may want to pick a cone or uh, some rays right in front of you uh, and set a threshold distance that if the reported distance right in front of you is less than a certain value, then you are about to uh, have a collision. So you should just set the speed um, and steering to zero. And then the final piece uh, of extra credit uh, is the following, that in all of the, uh, the baseline demo, I kept emphasizing that it's completely fine to assume that the car is moving at a constant speed so that you can focus the tuning of your PID on steering correction rather than correcting the, the speed of the car. So in formal terminology, the baseline demo is for you to show autonomous lateral behavior, okay? Lateral correction is uh, to steer the car left and right into the direction of motion. The part three of the extra credit is encouraging you to also implement proportional integral and derivative control in the longitudinal direction, which is the same as the direction of motion of the car. So here you can say based on the error reported, um, you can speed up or slow down. So how would this work, right? So on the straight parts of the track, it is very likely that you will not deviate much from your desired trajectory if you have a well-tuned steering uh, lateral controller. So if that's the case, you should be going faster. This is where racing comes in. Racing, it doesn't happen at constant speeds. So if, if your error is less, you should be going faster. And if your error is higher, you should slow down and give your car a chance to minimize the error by steering aggressively. Also notice that you can steer sharper when you are slower rather than when you are faster. So you can modify the control.python ROS node so that the velocity of the car also changes with error and not the, just the steering of the car. And that will give you some more extra credit if you are able to demo that. So that is all in terms of the actual assignment. Here are a few logistical important things to keep in mind as you attempt the assignment. Uh, in the ROS F110 simulator, the virtual LiDAR that we provide you uh, is actually better than the physical LiDAR. Uh, in, the, in the virtual simulator, uh, the LiDAR can see up to 30 meters. So this is like a 30LX uh, Hokuyo LiDAR. Uh, the field of view of the LiDAR is 270 degrees. Uh, and this is how it's set up. So the rays in front of you correspond to sort of zero degrees, and then you go from a negative 135 to a positive 135 or the other way around, okay? So the range vector usually starts from the left to the right, uh, the direction in which the LiDAR scans. 
this is just a recap of what the laser scan message looks like. Um, what we are interested in is mostly the ranges vector of the uh, scan messages that are received. Uh, and in particular, you know, for a particular angle um, that you send to this get range function, it will look at the ranges vector and return the distance reported at that angle. So here's a simple example. Um, so let's say my horizontal ray actually corresponds to 30 degrees. So this is my A, uh, distance A. And then I choose theta to be 50 degrees. And then my uh, other ray uh, is going to be at 80 degrees, which would give me my distance B. Uh, and so the calculation is very simple. Um, to obtain the index of the range vector where you can get your ray for any value of, um, of the desired angle, you simply multiply by that angle with the um, length of the range vector divided by the total field of view. Now this exact equation is not going to work in the simulator. This is just an example. If you have a field of view of 240 degrees and the length of the data range is say 1080 values, then what you are simply saying is multiply my desired angle with the uh, index per field of view. So I can calculate uh, the value of the index in uh, corresponding to a particular ray. Uh, so for example, if I want to look at what would be the index of the ray, which is at 30 degrees. Why 30 degrees? In this example, this is just an arbitrary example. Don't get confused with the image of the LIDAR I showed earlier with the 270 degrees field of view. Uh, what this is showing you is that this horizontal ray, which is you know, one of the tasks you have to do for wall following is pick the rays corresponding to the A and the B distances and the value theta. And it is very, very highly recommended that the A vector be along this perpendicular direction to the motion of the car. So in this example, this ray, which is zero degrees, if you look at the uh, horizontal, uh, absolute horizontal uh, uh, coordinate frame of the slide, but in reality, in the frame of reference of the, the range vector of the LIDAR, this may actually correspond to, let's say, 30 degrees. And so what I can compute the index of the range vector, which will give me this distance in the following manner, 30 multiplied by the length of the range vector divided by the number of rays or the field of view. So that was the only point I wanted to make here. So very important before I wrap up is some logistics in terms of um, how do you actually put the car in autonomous mode in the online simulator? Um, and so, so in order for, for your ROS nodes, the control.py, which is the one which is publishing the values uh, uh, to the uh, offboard command topic, uh, you need to SSH into the, uh, the account of your team on the car. And, you know, similar to the process that you uh, were asked to follow for teleop in the previous video. Uh, and what you have to do is you have to set a parameter. Um, uh, uh, basically, you have to set a parameter uh, which is called command priority to simulator of board. Okay, so so simulator of board means that we are telling the simulator to ignore any commands coming from the teleop node and only um, multiplex or consume or by let the uh, autonomous commands bypass to the the controller. Okay, so you just have to run this from your SSH session. And then once you have done that, then you can launch uh, similar to the teleop control, but with a slight difference, you, know, you can launch your remote access dot launch from within the SSH session. It has the usual arguments that you have to provide the UVA ID, um, the car name, you set visualize to false because hopefully you are already visualizing from a VM. In this case, you set remote teleop to be false because we don't want the car to respond to teleop signals, but we set the listen off board um, argument to be true. So remember using, uh, while we were implementing teleop in the previous uh, video, we set this to be false, but now we actually set the listen off board to be true. And in combination with this parameter, um, which is the command priority, um, the controller will know that it should be expecting something on the car X offboard command topic. Okay, 
So again, if it's not clear, uh, go through the instructions in the PDF. It's uh, explained in much more detail. Um, I'm just providing an overview of the sequence of steps. So that's pretty much it in terms of the lab assignment. Um, I wish you all the best with this. Uh, as always, let me or the TA knows if uh, you have trouble with any part of the assignment or uh, for some reason the simulator crashes. So we are actually looking into making the simulator more robust and I think uh, we have some plans on making sure it doesn't crash. It has something to do with dynamic uh, IP settings on the CS server that, that we can easily fix. Uh, but other than that, this is again a short video uh, to just announce the uh, release of the assignment wall following. Um, and later this week, we will resume our, uh, go back to our long format lecture format to cover some advanced topics on mapping and pure pursuit uh, and getting to some, uh, um, you know, strategic racing and high level strategies for racing as well. So thanks for listening and I will see you in the next lecture.